Hi guys, Lewis here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Elemental. This is uh, primarily a free page builder, and it's one that everyone seems to be talking about lately. So I'm going to walk you through the builder and show you some of the things uh, that it can do. So first of all, this is the side panel over here. This is basically where everything is controlled, and you can uh, drag this out, you can expand it, which is great if you're working with uh, text. Uh, we'll get into that a bit more soon. And you can also uh, contract it to give yourself more screen space. And this is useful for me especially because I'm on a uh, MacBook 13 inch, uh, which you know sometimes it can cause problems with page builders. And you know I'd actually like if this went into some kind of list mode and I could shrink it even further. That would be good. Um, but as it is, it's nice to it's nice to be able to have control over this anyway. One really nice addition here is that you can actually slide this away by clicking the little arrow here and that puts you into a preview mode so you can't you cannot make any edits this is showing you exactly how it will look uh, you know on the front end so just the, the sim simplicity and speed of that is something that I'm you know I'm definitely a fan of so let's bring that back out let's look at the layout settings so I'm going to add a new section here and as you can see it asked me to select a structure these are basically just different column settings so Let's say I want a two column layout, that puts that in there for me, and I can go ahead and drag stuff in these columns. Now, if I wanted to uh, make this a three column layout, all I would need to do is click the column tab here and press the plus symbol, and that would add in another column for me. Now, another thing you can do is re uh, drag these to uh, arrange the sizes, and it also gives you a little percentage up here, which is useful. Um, I would like if this snapped into place. Um, I don't know if there's a short key, I haven't found it. Um, but yeah, that, that would be nice to just have it snap into certain um, percentages. But as it is, it's still quite good. And keep in mind, you don't always need to add a section from here. If you just wanted an element and you didn't need any columns, you could simply just go in and drag the element into this box and it would create a single section for you. And finally, you can actually use the columns widget. If you drag that in, uh, it will automatically give you two columns, which again, you can you know, add your own columns in if needed. So there's really multiple ways to achieve the same thing when it comes to creating different layouts. So let's talk more about the elements or the widgets. And you've seen me use a few of them here, but Elementor has quite a generous library. I mean, it's not the most com comprehensive uh, when it comes to page builders. There's definitely some things missing here and I'll get into that. Um, but, you know, it does the basics really well. And one thing I liked is that it gives you um, WordPress widgets as well. So anything that would naturally show up uh, in your WordPress widget area will be here. And also third party widgets show up as well. So, for example, we've got Add Inserter, Malgun, uh, we've got some uh, Thrive widgets here. So, you know, you can drag these in and they will naturally show up inside the builder, which is, I think, is really cool. In terms of what's missing, um, for me, there's, there just seems to be a lack of like marketing type elements. So, you know, things like uh, star ratings are not there. Things like tables, you know, if you're creating a, a, a best X or Y article and you, you want to have a comparison table, that's going to be very difficult with uh, Elementor widgets. Um, you know, and even something as simple as a, a table of contents, it, it's not in there. And, you know, I know that these elements are being worked on, new stuff's coming out all the time, so I'm sure that will be fixed, and I know people are, are constantly asking for, for things like tables specifically. So again, I'm sure that will come out eventually, but as it stands, there are some things missing that I think as marketers we're going to struggle with. Now let's talk about global widgets. So if I drag something onto the page here, I'm going to drag, let's see, I'm going to drag this icon box in. Now let's say I, I want to make some changes to this, so I don't know, let's change, let's change the color of it to uh, this orangey red. And I like how this is now, and I want to be able to use this again on any page. Now what I can do is I can hover over the element, and I can click this little save symbol here, and I can save it as, I can give it a name obviously, in this case I'm just going to call it element. Now you'll notice that Elementor has taken me to the global tab here, and the element that I just saved appears under here as well. So anything under this global tab is obviously a global element. That means whatever page you use this on, it can be updated from a central location and that, that change will be affected across all those pages. So for example, if I drag this on the page here, you'll notice as well that it has a yellow border which tells me it's a global element. 
Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually drag two on here just to, just to show you how this works. So let's edit this one. I'm going to unlock this widget by editing. And I'm going to add a couple of exclamation marks in here. And you'll notice that it changes on both of these. And this works across all pages across your entire site, as I said. Um, now, for example, you might not always want to uh, use this as a global widget. Maybe you want, you want to add it to a page and make some independent changes. And if that's the case, you can click this, you can click the element you want to change, and you can unlink it. And that will it'll give you a little uh, notification, and you can unlink. And you'll notice that this one still has a yellow border because it's still a global widget. But this one is unlinked, and I get all the controls back. I can, make, I can delete text. It doesn't affect this global widget, as you can see. So this is a really, really useful feature. I've had a lot of fun playing with this, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around uh, the different ways I can use this and benefit from this feature. Okay, so let's talk about section templates. And a section is a, a group of elements. So this is one element, this is a second, this is a third. And the section incorporates all of those. So you can see the, the, dot, the dashed border around the side here. And we can actually save that section by clicking the save icon here. I'm gonna call this section, save. And this brings me to my library. Now to get back to this, if you're on another page, or you know you need to get back to it later you just click the add template button and click my templates up here and I can just go ahead and insert that into the page again and it works pretty much as you would expect now there is a difference in that this is not a global element this is a static section we do have a global element inside this section but the section itself is static I can go ahead and make changes to this as I see fit and it won't be reflected anywhere else on my site now, if I wanted to use a global section, there is a way you can do this. It's a bit counterintuitive. It's, uh, it took me a while to figure this out. But all you need to do is go to your widgets library, find the template widget, drop it in, and select your template, in this case section, from the sidebar. You may need to uh, refresh the page to get this to show up. In this case, I'm going to click this, and you'll see that it pops up with my section. Now this, is, uh, this behaves very differently in a sense that I cannot actually edit this. I cannot go in and change the, the text here. This is treated as a single block. And even though it doesn't have a yellow border, um, it is a global section. So slightly counterintuitive, it doesn't work the same way as global widgets. Um, I think a lot of people get confused by this. I know I did. But at the moment, that's essentially how it works. So one more thing on templates, and that's page templates. Now, the first thing I'll say is that before you uh, bring in a page template, the, you're probably going to want to clear all the content on the page if there is any. And the reason I say that is because when loading a page template with Elementor, it can crash uh, if you have content on the page. At least that's what I've found. So the best thing to do is click this little uh, hamburger icon and go to delete all content and delete. And then what you'll do is click add template and that will bring up the page temp templates library. They do have a uh, pretty good selection here. There's, there's quite a few templates and a lot of them are also free. You can see which ones aren't. It has the little, little pro icon in the corner. We also have uh, some landing pages and, and uh, product pages here. But I do think that Elementor spreads itself um, thin. It's trying, to, it's trying to cater for everybody. There are definitely some templates here uh, that I'd use and probably tweak because at the moment it's just, like I said, it's very general. And there's also, there's also no filtering. So I, can, I can't do a search for landing page and just see all the landing pages. I actually have to scroll through this and find them myself. Um, so that's slightly annoying. Um, so I'm going to insert this landing page here and you'll see another issue that we'll run into. Okay, so I've cut this but I've actually been waiting for a good minute and this is still loading. Um, even though I've deleted the content, I still had a problem here. So what I'm going to have to do is close this, save the page, refresh it and try again. So I just wanted, I just wanted to highlight that. Um, there's definitely a bug here. This has happened to me multiple times. So I'm going to cut it again and hopefully it'll work. Okay, I gave it another go. This time it worked. What you'll see here is that we, we don't actually have a, a true page template. What's happening is it's, it's been imported into the content area. It, it hasn't taken over the whole page, which is really what we want this to do. Um, so what we're going to have to do is go back to the hamburger icon 
and click page settings and you can change the template here to Elementor Canvas which is essentially just uh, an entirely blank page and if we preview that you'll see that this is uh, exactly what we needed. Um, actually the Elementor Canvas is a very recent addition uh, it came out just a few days ago as I'm recording this um, and before that you had to you know go through some crazy steps to get an, a blank template so it was nice to see that they implemented this. Uh, it would probably make more sense if it was an automatic setting whenever you load a page template. I can't imagine anyone would want uh, to have a, an entire page template within, the, within their content area but I don't know, that, that just, it just seems a bit odd to me. Regardless, uh, the page templates work well. Like I said, uh, you have a good library. And you know, if you don't like any of the templates there, you can, all, you can definitely uh, create your own and save them. And the way to do that is to head down here. I believe it's this one. Yep, save template. And that will, uh, that will save your entire page and it will go into your templates library. Okay, let's move on to uh, responsiveness. And Elementor is responsive by default, uh, which you probably expect. Um, but what you can do is preview for each individual device. So if I head down here, I can click this and I can see what this looks like in mobile. And this alone is you know, a massively useful feature, but it actually goes one step further than just being able to preview it. You can actually make independent changes for each device type. So let's say for argument's sake, you know, I don't like the margin between these two. I want to create a, a, a bigger gap. So I can click this drag drop design. I can uh, add a bottom margin, say 50. And what you'll see here is that we've actually selected the mobile icon, which means these settings will only apply to mobile. If I head back to my desktop view, you'll see that the, the margin hasn't been applied there. So these are very uh, independent changes. This is useful if you've had trouble in the past with getting things to look just right on mobile. And then when you do, you go back to desktop and it's not quite right there. And it's a constant balancing act. Um, this really solves that problem. So I'm a massive fan of this feature. And one final thing you can do here is actually hide elements and entire sections on different devices. So let's say I want this image here to be hidden on mobile, I can click advanced, I can go to responsive, I can hide on mobile. So if I preview this now, what I need to do is click this arrow here and you'll see that it disappears. This is, this is exactly how it will look on the front end. Okay, revision history. This is a big one. So if you make a mistake within Elementor, and I'm just gonna switch back to the desktop view, if you make a mistake, let's say you delete something, move something around, you can't quite get it back the way that it was, uh, and you just want to undo that action. Well, unfortunately, Elementor doesn't have an undo button. And what they have instead is a revision history manager. So I'll show you what I mean here. If I go back to the hamburger menu and I click revision history, you'll see that every time I've saved this page, it's created a revision. And if I click back, it will preview that revision and show me what that looks like. See, here we go. This is what I deleted earlier. And as useful as that is, and you know, I can see this being insanely useful for some people, um, it just isn't a replacement for an undo button. This is something that's been requested a number of times, but it, it just seems odd to me that it, it's come so late and they've, they've given priority to something like this, which is you know, a lot more advanced than just being able to undo a simple action. Okay, let's talk about the fact that this plugin is open source. Now, open source means that the, the source code of the software is freely available. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know a lot about how this works, but I know that other developers can contribute and make changes to the code. Uh, there are a bunch of third party plugins that uh, have already been developed that help enhance uh, Elementor. And I'm gonna show you, if we go to the plugins repository, You'll see here I've searched Elementor and I've got some third party plugins here. Now this one is uh, made by Elementor, it's the actual page builder. But these here are created by other developers and they help to improve the plugin. They give it functionality that's not in there by default. So I'm sure you can see that there's a ton of potential here. And again, I really, I'm not 100% sure on how this works, but they also have a, a GitHub page where you can submit uh, issues or suggestions. There just seems to be a, a, a much more combined effort when it comes to improving this plugin and making it the best that it can be.
So for me, this really adds something new to this page builder specifically, and it, it will be interesting to see um, how it develops as a result. Now, I wanna to quickly touch on uh, support. This is always a big thing when it comes to uh, software. And one of the biggest draws of Elementor is uh, the, the community that surrounds it. It has an active Facebook group with uh, a couple thousand members at the moment, but it is growing. You wouldn't believe how active that group is, considering it's still quite small. And, and considering that, you know, this is a free plugin, people don't get paid to help you, but they're really, really interested in uh, helping each other. And on top of that, you have the YouTube channel where, they, where Elementor post uh, detailed tutorials, highlighting different things and features about, about the, the page builder itself. And they have detailed documentation um, if you need that. So that's uh, a quick overview of Elementor. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.